In this video, we're going to look at factorising and solving quadratic equations, so quadratics. And the reason why we do this is because solving a linear equation is pretty easy. I'm hoping that we have all seen this before. An example would be 2x minus 6 is equal to 0. This is a linear equation because our x to the power of 1 is our largest power. And this we can just solve for x using algebra. So 2x, we can move the 6 over as a positive and divide by 2 and x is equal to 3. So solving linear equations just by using simple algebra is quite easy. But if we have a quadratic equation, which all of these examples are because there's an x squared term, we need to first factorize our quadratic and then solve. So I'm going to factorize each of these and then solve. So each of these questions uh, does have a diff slightly different form of factorizing. So please try and be aware of when to use what rule. Okay, we'll start with this first one. If we see two terms in our quadratic equation and they both have x in it, what we want to try and do is use our most simple form of factorizing, which is taking out what is common. So from our two terms, an x is common. So let's take that out and then we open a bracket and then x multiplied by what is x squared? Well, it's just x and then x multiplied by what gives me positive 2x. Well, it would just be positive 2, because x times x, if we expand it, x squared, x times 2 is 2x. So this is equal to 0. Now, from this step here, now we have something multiplied by something is equal to 0. And now it's in a factorized format. We can use the null factor law. The null factor law helps us solve a quadratic. And the null factor law says that if a, b is equal to 0, so something times something is equal to 0, Either A can be 0 or B can be 0. This is the null factor law. So from this step here, we can say that X can be 0 or X plus 2 can be 0. So therefore, this is one answer for X and X is equal to negative 2 is the other solution for X. So notice with quadratics, we'll quite often get two solutions for X. And we can just quickly check that. Because if we look at our original equation, if x was 0, 0 squared is 0, plus 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 does equal 0. So we've balanced the equation. And if x were to equal negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, plus 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4, which would also give us 0. Okay, let's go down now. We have two terms again where x is common, but there's also a number common. 4 is common. So we can factorize out the 4x, and then 4x multiplied by what is 4x squared, or just another x, and then minus this will be 3. Because now 4x multiplied by x is 4x squared, 4x multiplied by negative 3 is negative 12x. Now from here, 4x can be equal to 0, as we now have our correct factorized form or x minus 3 can be equal to 0. And then x will be equal to 0 when we divide the 4 underneath. So that's one solution. And x can equal 3 is the other solution for x. Okay, let's move on to the third example. Now, if we see something squared, our quadratic term minus, and this is just a constant now, not a, not a variable with x, but it is a squared number. This is a type of quadratic I want us to look out for. This is actually called a difference of two square. So if you factorize this correctly, it will be x minus 5, x plus 5. You always need to be on the lookout for difference of two squares. And difference of two squares is when you have something squared minus something squared. You take the square root of both terms and you put them in brackets with the opposite signs. And we can kind of check this quickly. If we were to expand this, we'd get x squared plus 5x minus 5x, which those two terms cancel out. And then we'd have minus 25. Now from this step, we can say that x minus 5 can be equal to 0 or x plus 5 can be equal to 0. So therefore, x is equal to 5 or x is equal to negative 5. And if we sub those two x values into our original equation, it will show, it will prove that there were two possible answers. Okay, so be on the lookout for difference of two squares. 
Now this bottom one, we have three terms. Now if we have a three termed quadratic, we need to have a factorizing method, which we can, we can always apply. And even if we're in a stressful exam situation, you need a go to, uh, you need a go to factorizing uh, technique here. So I'm going to show you a simple one. What we need to first do is identify A, B and C. And A, B and C stand for the three coefficients of my three termed quadratic here, where A is the number in front of X squared, where there's going to be an invisible one here. If there's no number, it's a one. Then B stands for the coefficient of X, which will be negative two. And C will be our constant at the end, which will be negative eight. Now this is a template to help you factorize. If you put a box here, a box here. This is AC in this box and this is B. Now you may have seen a similar technique in your textbook. A times C, we go one times negative eight, which is negative eight, and B is negative two. What we, did, what we then need to do is find two numbers that go here and here. They need to multiply to give AC and add to give B. So two numbers that multiply to give negative eight well, four and two multiply to give eight, but if we want to mul multiply to give negative eight and add to be negative two, the four needs to be a negative because this would add to be negative two and multiply. Now, once we have our two terms, we put them into brackets. So we put X and then this is minus four. So minus four and bracket X, this is a positive two, so plus two. And what we've actually done there is we've factorized our original quadratic into two brackets, x minus four and x plus two. And if we did expand this, we can check that it is the same as the equation above, just in factorized form. And then we can solve using the null factor law, x minus four is zero, x plus two is zero. So the two solutions would be x equals four and x is equal to negative two. So I, I highly recommend practicing a few of these factorizing uh, questions where the quadratic looks like this. Maybe try and use this template or, or a similar one your teacher can explain to you. Okay, the example over here, this is actually a three term quadratic similar to the one we just did, but this also has a special name. This is a perfect square. And if you did recognize it, this is just the bracket x plus three, x plus three. Now, if you didn't recognize it, that's okay. You can just use the same factorizing technique that we did in the previous question. But uh, this, is, this is one that's similar to a difference of two square, you might be able to spot. And if you just quickly expand this, you can see that it's going to be uh, x squared plus three x plus three x. So that's where we get our six x from, and then plus nine. So from here, we're actually going to get two answers that are the same. X plus three is equal to zero. X plus three is equal to zero. So we're going to get two answers which are the same. X is equal to negative three. And finally, if we need to factorize a quadratic that has three terms similar to this, but the number in front of the X squared, so our A is not one, it's a slightly harder method but I'll go through it. It's very similar to this, but just one extra step. So we label our A is six, our B will be positive seven, and our C is negative three. Now we set up our template, box, box, A, C, and B. Now six times negative three is negative 18, positive seven for B. Now two numbers that multiply to give negative 18, or well, nine and two give 18, which one will be the negative? Well, if you want to add to give positive seven, the two will need to be negative such that it still is a positive result. Now here's the tricky bit. What we need to do is we need to put this six here into both brackets. So instead of just putting X and our term, we need to put six X, and then we have plus nine, and six X minus two. So we need to put the six, our A value, into both brackets, which we actually did over here in this question, it was just a one, so there's a sneaky one in these brackets here. 
Uh, so we need to put the 6x in and we need to then divide our, our brackets here or one of the brackets by that number 6. And this is, a, this is a classic question where one of the brackets isn't clearly divisible by 6. We can't divide this one by 6 and get positive integers and we can't divide this one by 6 and get positive integers. So this is the, one of the more difficult questions. We actually, for this one, need to split up that division of 6 into dividing one of the brackets by 3 and one of them by 2. Because if we divide one bracket by 3 and one bracket by 2, we're essentially dividing the uh, our result by 6. We just split it up. And this one is easily divisible by 3 and this one's easily divisible by 2. So we're going to get, if we divide this by 3, we're going to get 2x plus 3 and 3x minus 1. And we have factorized our tricky quadratic up here. Now from here, we can just use the null factor law to say 2x plus 3 must equal 0 and 3x minus 1 must equal 0. 2x is equal to negative 3 and therefore x is equal to negative 3 on 2. It's our first solution or 3x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 1 third. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom out here. Hopefully you learnt a few things or you revised some of your factorizing laws. There's, there's a bunch of different rules here, but this is pretty much all of them. You may see different letters in here. You might see an A squared or a K squared, but that's, that's fine. It's just some variable squared, so it's a quadratic. So try and apply the rules that we've used in this video. Okay, good luck.